All right, well, thank you everyone for joining very promptly and punctually. We're gonna have a few more people join as we go, but I do wanna get started so that we're not delaying anybody that is already on the call. So I do wanna welcome everyone to the latest version of the VIA Live product training, this time for the Liger Thermocoagulator. And we're very excited to have the, our product expert on with you that will take you through a demonstration and answer your questions directly. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to just introduce quickly VIA Global Health for those that are less familiar or who have just started working with us. So VIA is a global medical sourcing platform which makes it easy for you to source, quote, purchase and ship products from around the world. So I'll show you just a little bit about the platform to help familiarize you with it. And so that way you can start to source your products through us directly and hopefully make your purchases as well. So this is our main page. Obviously you can look through our top categories. You can use the search bar, which I'll come back to after that. You can find a little bit more about us as a company, some of our buyer's guides. I'll go into more detail about these in just a moment. But you can also see our impact. So this is actually uh, countries and lives impact that is growing on the day. So we're probably up closer to over 70 countries now. So this is a lot of what we're about is impacting patient lives and making medical equipment universally accessible to everyone globally. Uh, you can see some of our featured products and some of our testimonials, but I'll go into a little bit more detail on those first. Um, so first I'll just go to the about page and you can go everything here in our side navigation just by clicking on that you can see all the options there. So the about page really just helps you understand who we are and it builds the trust in, in us uh, for you. So you get to understand how we work. We're very transparent about our information. We have nothing to hide based on how we function but also about our products. We want to give you as much information as possible so that you're making a very trusted, informed decision. So you can see a little bit about how our actual system works, who our customers are, what other services we provide, because we're more than just an e-commerce platform. We're more than just an online platform, an online catalog. You can do everything from product training like we're doing right now, to logistics, to um, you know, sales support and customer service, to our VR rewards program, which I can show you in a moment. So this is a little bit more about us. You can see some of our partners that we worked with over the years from USAID to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, some things about our offices as well. So jumping into another big one that I like to uh, show because I'm very proud of our relationships with our customers is just what our customers have said. So we've just taken certain things that have um, risen to the top from feedback. So a lot are either based on honesty and strong relationships or helping the customer's business grow that they started very small, but because they found VIA, they were able to expand their product portfolio and the services they can provide. Uh, reliable deliveries, which you can see a few pictures there as well, um, but just showing that we are a very trusted logistics and supply chain partner. It's not just about finding the products, we help get them to your door as well. And then again, positive impact is really what drives everything that VIA does. It's about impacting patient lives and making sure that the equipment that's needed finds its way to where it's needed most and for the most affordable way possible. So this is just a bit more that I'm very proud of just to showcase how our customers feel about us and how they feel about working with us. Another way we help to inform your decisions is these product training videos. So just like we'll do today, we'll record that and put that up on this page as well. Also on the product page of the um, thermocoagulator, the video will live there as well. So this just shows you all the different products we've done over the years where you can then watch and revisit or even use in some of your sales programs to help explain the product and help explain the benefits of these particular products. So it's very helpful and we put them all here so that you can come back at any time and find those again. Another thing we have, which you can see again on the side navigation, if you just circle down to the buyer's guides, is we have the option to help inform you even further about making an informed purchase decision. So this one in particular is for a bubble CPAP therapy. We don't have one specifically for uh, thermal ablation, but we do have for many other things from COVID-19 to neonatal jaundice to something like bubble CPAP. So it gives you a bit of a background on what it actually is, bubble CPAP therapy, how that works, the key considerations to think about when you're making the purchase. And then we actually share some of the options we have as well. So you can get a quote and purchase that potentially. So again, it's really all about informing your decision and helping you to make a, a decision and a purchase with the most information possible. So that's really what we're about. Um, our rewards program is another thing that really sets us apart in that 
every time you make a purchase with us, you actually earn points that can be used to redeem for a discount on your future orders. Also interacting with us for market insights interviews, for actually attending webinars like this, you can earn points because we want to build trust with you. And the more we can engage with you, the more we can show you just how trusted that Via Global Health can be as a platform. So we want to reward that trust and that interaction with uh, via rewards points. So it helps to build our trust, but it helps to build discounts for you as well moving forward. So let me just circle back really quickly just to bring it back to the product page itself. Um, so if you actually go to that main page again, let me just circle back here. If you go to that main page, you just click on that shop all products button, or you can come over here and click shop all products. And basically what that does is it brings you over to our, our shop page which is all of our products all in one place. It's a really handy feature we have over on the side here that it just filters. So if you're looking specifically for something, um, let's go to COVID-19 essentials. And if you tick that filter, it will just filter down only to the products you're looking for for COVID-19. Really nice way to help you understand just the products that are relevant to the search. So if in particular you're dealing with a clinic that's focused solely right now on COVID-19 response, you can basically show this link and say, this is the product uh, catalog that I have available to me right now. You can even do the same with brands. So if you're looking for a specific brand in our catalog, you can look at just their products, you know, just MTTS, it would only bring up their suite of products. Or for product tags, if for example, you're looking for um, a ventilator. If you tick that box for just ventilator, it would bring up only our ventilator options. So really key features to help you find the products you want. So we're not just about helping inform your product uh, decision, but actually helping you understand which products we have that match that criteria you're looking for. So kind of bringing it back to the Liger thermocoagulator. So one of our most popular ways for our customers to engage with our site is our search bar. So you can type anything in here. You could type in thermometer or cannula, whatever it might be, but I'll bring up here where you can type thermo. So thermo obviously is a fairly broad term. Obviously it has a thermocoagulator here. It has a thermocoagulator probes as well, but it also has thermometers as well. So if you want to do that, obviously thermocoagulator would then bring up just the product itself and the different probe options. So what I'll do there is just take you to the product page very quickly and show you about what the product page has. And again, we're really trying to make sure you have all the information you need to make the most informed and trusted decision in your purchase. So you can see here, obviously, we know everyone asks for pictures of the product. They want to see the product itself, but also how it's packaged. So this is very important for our customers to understand that. There's also a short description of what the product is, what the minimum order quantity is, who the seller is, where they're based, what the warranty term, regulatory approvals. What we've really done is distilled all the most salient points and the most uh, commonly requested questions that our customers have asked, and we put that information front and center. So everyone said immediately, we need to know the key features. So we've created a section for that. Everybody said we need to know the specifications. So we've clearly outlined the specifications so that it's in incredibly easy to find and it's fully transparent. We're not hiding any information. We're not burying it anywhere. We're putting it front and center. Another thing that everybody wants to know is what are the accessories? What are optional accessories and add-ons that we can also add? Um, of course, product documents are crucial in your sales pitches or just understanding your procurement. So things like manuals or instruction pamphlets, uh, brochures, any kind of data sheets, any regulatory approval certificates are so crucial. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the video from the previous webinar is here, uh, some other informational videos as well. So once we have this new video edited, we'll put this on the product page as well. So you'll have a, a whole list of videos you can reference back to. Uh, so again, FAQ, studies and trials are all here, box contents, and then warranty we know is a very important part of it as well. And then this particular product, we actually have product um, testimonials. So not just testimonials about working with VIA, but about a specific product and how it was effective and successful for those particular customers. So uh, that is everything there. If you do want to request a quote from VIA, it's very simple. You just request this pricing, you fill in your information, someone from our sales team will come back to you. So as for, we move into the demonstration portion, if you'll look on the software, the GoToWebinar software, you'll see an option there to ask a question. You can just type your question in at any time. We will revisit it 
as we come back after the demonstration. But at any time, you can type in your question and we welcome all questions. It makes the webinar that much more effective to hear from you directly. So with that, I'd actually like to hand everything over to Tim Pickett, who is our product expert with Liger based on the thermocoagulator. So uh, Tim, if you can flip on your video and your microphone and, and introduce yourself, I'll, I'll hand everything over to you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be able to say hello to everyone and, uh, and talk about our, our product uh, here that we're, uh, we're selling it here at Liger Medical. Um, it's been a great partnership with Via Global. Uh, we really have, um, our, our, our missions are really aligned uh, between the two companies um, to, uh, to, you know, to provide uh, safe, effective, um, and uh, low cost uh, uh, devices uh, in the developing world. Um, and that's really we've, our, our device, we actually developed it in uh, working with the World Health Organization um, uh, to, to, uh, to develop a portable uh, thermal coagulator uh, to treat precancerous lesions on the cervix. Um, and uh, we, we were the first company to develop a portable thermal coagulator. Um, this, is the, this is the device here. Uh, and you can see you know, from the pictures on, the, um, on, on VIA's website, uh, you know, it's, uh, this is what we've done. So uh, just to kind of show you the packaging, it's a, it's a durable plastic case uh, to be easily transportable. It can be thrown in a backpack or however, whatever, however people are using it. Um, nice, has nice latches uh, to keep things in there. And then um, our, our standard unit comes with uh, four, four probes that are actually uh, of three different types. So this is a 19 millimeter uh, flat probe. This is a 16 millimeter flat probe. And then this is a, this is a 19 millimeter nipple probe. So you can see that there. And this is used to center the device, the thermal ablation device in the os of the cervix. Um, each uh, each kit comes with the instructions for use. We provide this in English, um, but we also have this translated into Spanish, Portuguese, French, um, and and Chinese. Um, and those are all available. Um, um, we'll, we'll we'll provide them to via Global so that you guys you guys can have access to that as well. Um, here is the there's the device. Now, our our devices are not provided sterile. Um, they're provided clean, um, but they're they're meant to be uh, disinfected by the end users, um, right? So these probes are reusable, um, and so they have to use high level disinfection uh, to uh, to reuse them between each case. Um, in addition, um, our device comes with uh, with a spare battery. So you have two batteries. You get about 30 to 40 treatments per battery charge, um, and so that's so, so that, that that provides uh, you know quite a bit of um, um, of uses in between charges and a standard battery charger that plugs in. Um, kind of more about the packaging and the reason why we've done things the way we've done. This this is the charging adapter for the charger. It also doubles as an examination light. And um, the reason why we've done this is um, as we've shipped and sold lots of our devices into developing countries, um, there's, there's been a concern about lithium ion batteries and, 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 and what that, and the, the rules and the, and the laws and the, and the regulations from the International Air Transport Association about shipping uh, lithium ion batteries. Um, now, there is an exception uh, to that rule just like your cell phone has the battery contained inside of the device. Um, so your, your cell phones all meet this exception um, because there's lithium ion batteries, but they're inside of the device. That's why we ship our thermal coagulator with the battery inside of the device, um, um, as well as the examination light. So this is a, an actual device um, and because it's on there, 
we also meet that exception. So we have no conflict with any of the international regulations uh, for lithium ion batteries for, for, for getting this device out. Okay, so that's about the packaging. Um, I wanted to uh, discuss as well, um, um, this device is portable. It, it, it was the first portable thermocoagulator on the market um, about five years ago. And um, since then, we do have some competitors out on the market. Um, now, um, their devices are, 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 are more expensive, and um, their base unit only comes with one battery and two probes. Um, everything else you have to pay a, a extra for. Um, so, 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 so that's a, that, that's a, um, um, a, a competitive advantage that, that our device has is that we provide four probes uh, with every with every device, um, the, the the thermal coagulator. You know, th there's other ways to treat precancerous lesions on the cervix. Um, uh, you can um, uh, use cryotherapy, and um, uh, cryotherapy has its has many challenges uh, as well. Uh, cryotherapy requires large doers of liquid nitrogen. Um, or cry cryogenic gases, right? And so that's problematic in trying to transport those, uh, sourcing those. Um, in addition, uh, uh, cryo uh, the cryotherapy guns uh, will also freeze up and get clogged, uh, whereas thermal coagulation is, is very reliable um, in, in its use. Um, and especially since um, you can get 30 to 40 um, uh, uh, therapies out of a single battery charge uh, with, with, with our device, um, that that you know it, it there's it's, it's unlikely that you'll have not have access to electricity in between how many cycles charging uh, uh, therapy cycles you can have for this device. Okay, so I'd like to demonstrate the use of the device here. Um, I've got a pelvic a pelvic model uh, to show this. I have a window in there. Um, um, but the device, let me get this. It's a device, so the battery is placed in, in the device. And then you have a protective cap that goes over the tip. And it's inserted. Okay, and then the device is actually it's a single button operation. Um, um, this device has two types of feedback to the user, an audible, so it has a small speaker, and also lights. So you heard that, that beep, and then that light turns on. It's a blue light, and it's blinking. That's telling you that the unit is ready to be used, um, and it's pressed a second time. And now it's, the device is actually heating up. And um, uh, th this unit is set to 100 degrees Celsius for a 30 second treatment. It takes nine seconds for the device to heat up. Um, and once the device heats up, all four lights are on. Now, the lights and the beeper will actually count down for the user. So in this case, about seven to eight seconds in between uh, each light or beep. Um, and so this is a countdown to tell the, to tell the clinician um, uh, how the um, how long how long the treatment is going, and also indicates to the patient um, how and there and then it's finished right there. So this is actually uh, the clinicians can explain to uh, the patient, um, hey, you know, you, when you hear these beeps, this is this is how the therapy is progressing. Uh, in addition, the device has um, e examination lights. Um, You can see here, so that you can see into into the cervix and the treatment area. Um, okay, so like I said, the device is inserted intravaginally, just like that, and applied to the cervix. Um, it's typically used with a speculum, so that it can open up um, the, the vagina to see to see in, um, and inserted intravaginally. Now, also um, something very important. Um, that differentiates our device uh, from, from, from competitors is that um, our device is inserted into the vagina still cold. Um, so it's placed on the cervix um, while the device is still cold. 
and then it heats up on the device, on the cervix. So the whole thing is placed and secured and held firmly, and then the therapy is commenced and um, and, and 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 done on the patient. Um, our competitor um, um, actually has to heat up the probe prior to inserting it into the vagina. They don't have enough uh, power going to their to their heating element to heat up and maintain temperature while before it's pla um, while it's placed on the cervix. Okay, so this is yeah, so that 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 is the therapy. Um, in, in addition, um, um, something else is that the the, the temperature and duration settings um, on the thermal coagulator they they can be changed uh, here by us. Uh, based on your needs. So uh, we program the device to, to go uh, currently um, to go at 100 degrees Celsius in 30 seconds, but that can be changed. It can go to 120 degrees Celsius in 45 or 60 seconds or any combination of those. Um, we find that in different, uh, uh, different, different regions of the world and different um, environments, mountainous higher elevations, um, they, they actually, uh, there's, there's thickening of the mucosal membrane and they, and they request the higher temperature and longer duration for the treatment. Um, I, um, the, the, the thermal coagulator uh, goes really well uh, with the screen and treat programs that are being implemented um, all across the globe. Uh, the World Health Organization has made a call to eradicate cervical cancer um, and, and our company developed this device in response to that request. Uh, to provide the technology uh, necessary to eradicate it um, in, in, in global settings. Um, and um, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a pleasure working with VIA Global um, on, with, um, uh, with their sales team. They've been, they've been excellent. Um, they, they communicate very well and um, for us on the supplier and, um, uh, and I, I think we've been able to deliver product uh, to, 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 to their customers very, very well. Um, Brian, I, I think that's it for my demo. Um, happy to uh, take any and all questions now. That's great. Thank you very much, Tim. That was very thorough. I think a lot of the questions people have already asked, you've, you've answered through the course of your demonstration, which is great. Uh, we do have a few that have asked if you could just do the demonstration again where you're showing the insertion and the actual treatment, just because they may have missed that part. Um, sure. So if you could just Absolutely. run through that one more time, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah. So um, here, I'll try to do this all all at once. Um, so here's the here's the pelvic model. Here's a window, uh, so you can see in here. Let me. I'm going to prop this up. Okay, so here's the device, um, and it's inserted intravaginally right there through the speculum. I'm going to turn this. So after um, the, the the clinician inserts the device um, uh, intravaginally and places the tip on the cervix. Then he can center this. Um, turn the device on right here by pushing this button, and wait for it. There we go. So now it's in standby standby mode, and then press it one more time. And now the device is heating up. Um, not sure if the camera shows the lights dancing across the screen, but that but the dancing lights are showing that it's heating up, and now it's got to temperature takes about eight seconds um, while placed on the cervix. So that's a very quick heat up time. And now the device is counting down for the clinician and for the patient. Um, that's halfway, it's halfway through. So the world, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's 100 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds is the standard treatment. Um, and that can be modified to go at 45 seconds or 60 seconds and a choice of 100 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Celsius. Um, and it has it has examination lights, probably blinding everybody uh, with that. 
um, but but that's how it's used. Now the device, um, it's it's a very simple to use device, you know, and that was by design, a single button operation, um, and um, it's it's used um, used by doctors, used by midwives, trained uh, people who are trained by doctors and by midwives. Um, and so that's why it, it couples very well with these screen and treat programs in lots of places where they can do the visual inspection with acetic acid. Um, uh, Brian, I, I, uh, I, I don't um, see any questions here on, on my end. Um, nope. Yeah, so those come into us and that way okay. you don't have to focus on the questions. We'll just kind of curate yeah. those as well because okay. sometimes there's duplicates and things like that. Um, okay. and for a couple of people that have also asked about um, purchasing and pricing and things like that, that would be better to go again through the product page where you can just click that request pricing, uh, or you can email us directly at sales at viaglobalhealth.com. And I'll circle back to that at the end. We want to focus on the products right now. Um, so that was a great demonstration. I appreciate that. I think that was a little bit more uh, clear for some of the folks on the call. So that was perfect. Uh, a couple questions have come in just about um actually the beginning of the treatment so the first one is do you always require to use that with a speculum or can you actually start the treatment and the insertion without a speculum um uh, so i think um uh, typically what we see with uh people using this is that is that they are using a speculum um to, to just for just for visualization it can be used without a speculum um, um but uh as far as opening up the canal you know depending on on the on the vagina if it's um if it's a firm vagina then maybe you wouldn't need it but if it's a collapsed vagina you would certainly need a speculum to see in okay and then another question just about actually removing the probe um and concerns about burning the the vaginal walls mm -hmm. from removing that is is there something you can talk a little bit more about there great question yeah so um good good question um so actually um the device um will turn off the lights here once the temperature drops below 60 degrees celsius which is a safe temperature to remove it um, uh, and so these examination lights um, here will actually yeah you know, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do another uh, treatment on here so right now it's heating up and it, it gets the temperature um, and then after it counts down um we'll we'll uh We'll, we'll let it count down, but it will actually turn the lights off afterwards. Um, and, and that's an indication that, hey, the, the temperature at the tip is below 60 degrees Celsius and it's and it's safe to remove in case there's an accident, an, an accidental uh, touch to some other part of of, of, the, of the vaginal wall. Um, um, but yeah, so it's so it's over now and we can watch, you know, these, these lights will will turn off here, I'll put it over here. Um, um, it, it, the, the lights turn off much quicker. Oh, there we go, right there. So you can already see it's, it's already cooled down. Um, and so the lights actually turn off indicating that it's, it's safe to remove. Um, uh, in addition though, um, uh, you know, uh, part of the regulatory requirements so that we do demonstrate that the device is safe. And so we actually, uh, during design and development uh, for this device, we, we, we took temperature readings uh, along the shaft of the probe and at the bell of the probe. Um, and the, if the, the side of this, we call it the bell, because um, it's kind of a bell shape here. Um, the, the temperature here on the side of the bell uh, doesn't get above 40, 44 degrees Celsius. So the heat is concentrated on the, um, on the black tip. Um, and so e even if it was removed and it was accidentally touched the side, it's, it's, it, it feels warm, um, but it's not hot to the touch. I, it, it's not hot. Like, I, I, like there's no, there's no uh, burn reaction um, on, on, uh, for that. So, um, so yeah, so, so the, the probe was designed to be safe, to be safe in that manner. Oh, um, something else too, the, um, this this tip here, it's it's coated in a biocompatible um, a Teflon uh, coating, uh, which which is a non-stick coating. So so it will not stick uh, to tissue. 
um, after the tissue is, uh, is coagulated or even during the procedure. Um, um, there's a, there was a study that came out of, um, out of Nicaragua where they were actually just, um, where they compared um, pain and sensation levels of, of the thermal coagulator um, versus uh, um, uh, cryotherapy. And it was, it was less. Um, uh, uh, the pain with thermal coagulation is much less than uh, uh, cryotherapy. Um, and and there, there's a number of reasons for that. Um, um, uh, uh, one being the cryotherapy is three minutes of freezing, five minutes of thawing, and then another three minutes of freezing. And actually, when you when you freeze, when when the when the cryotherapy is being done, it's actually making an ice ball, and the the cryotherapy pen, the the, the tip, is actually stuck inside of that ice ball, and so it actually causes quite a bit of pain forming those ice crystals. Whereas thermal coagulation, um, uh, it, it it's cauterizing and dry and, and and desiccating the tissue, um, and 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 actually it causes the that increases the non-stick between the two, between the tissue and and the Teflon surface here, uh, and so it's it's um, it's it's there, there is we we've never had any incidences of of sticking of our device uh, to to tissue or or any incidences of burning something unintentionally based on the design of the device. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. That was a very thorough answer. Uh, so I I guess for a lot of people that are asking now. Kind of follow up says, is there a requirement ever for a guide or a cover or a slide of anything? And you're saying in that case, it, there wouldn't be because the, the tip does actually cool down extremely quickly. Yes, yes, that yes, that is correct. And of course, because you're actually inserting the probe cold and it heats up once it's um, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so actually, uh, Brian, you bring up a good point. Um, uh, our, our, one of our competitors, I mean, I'll, I'll mention the name YSAP. Um, that they actually have a guide, um, a, a sleeve on their device, and and they claim it's for safety. Um, but you know, our uh, we overcame that challenge, um, I think, in a better way um, by by designing our device to be able to heat up while applied to the cervix, right? So 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 their device has to be heated up, and so in that case, yeah, it, it is as you're inserting the device, and if your probe were hot. You know, then I would be concerned about burning the vaginal wall or um, or, or 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 hurting the patient, and so that's why they have to have that sleeve. Um, uh, but for our device, since the device is um, uh, is is inserted cold um, and applied to the cervix and then heated up, we don't have to take uh, we don't have that additional, which which I think plays well too, because then our our uh, our, our our cleaning and high level disinfection, it's just the probe. You don't have to do cleaning and high-level disinfection of an additional sleeve and component. Where I mean, potentially you get you can get um, uh, you know bacteria or other things involved with that. And so it's it's actually less less work to maintain uh, these probes than than our competitors. That's perfect. And there's actually a lot of questions about sterilization, which I'll circle back to in a minute. But uh, as far as I know, you mentioned battery life is about 30 to 40 uses before recharge. Is there a, a similar um, statistic for probe life? How many uses or how many treatments should a probe have before it should be replaced? Great. Um, so um, um, the, the probes are reusable, and um, um, if, if cared for proper, properly, they, they will be they can be used for over 150 uh, cycles of, tre of treatment and and high level disinfection. Um, uh, so yeah, so so yeah, so they are reusable, um, and and we validated the high level disinfection uh, with with glutaraldehyde, Cydex, um, and we, we can talk. I, we'll, we'll talk more about that. But yes, so there there is a use life, um, and um, it, if properly cared for, um, it, we we in our testing that we've done here, where we've cycled them over and over and over and over again, um, you know, we've gotten over 150, you know, 200. Uh, cycles before we show any sign of, of any issues there. 
Okay, perfect. And I guess probably a pretty good segue to go into the disinfection. I know you mentioned glutaraldehyde, if you could go into a little bit more detail there, but there's also a few questions about whether or not the probes can be um, autoclaved as well. Great, great, great question. So yeah, so 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 we actually validated um, both autoclave and uh, glutaraldehyde, Cytex, um, uh, as forms of, of high-level dis disinfection and sterilization. Now, the, the, the autoclave does shorten the life, the use life of the device um, to about 25 uses. Uh, so, we, so we recommend using high-level disinfection to extend the life um, of the probes. Um, now, um, about high-level disinfection, so, you know, uh, for regulatory requirements, um, we, um, um, we, we uh, validated uh, glutaraldehyde or Cytex. Now, um, we, we know that in, 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 in lots of places, they either don't have autoclave or they don't have glutaraldehyde. They may have um, other types of high-level disinfections or mid-level disinfections, um, uh, disinfecting uh, chemicals. And in those cases, uh, um, you know, we have customers who talk to us all, all the time about the different ones they're using, uh, Cytex, OPA, um, uh, or uh, Parasafe. Um, people are using uh, uh, Clorox, and Clorox is a mid-level disinfection. Um, so it doesn't have the same uh, level uh, of, 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 of reduction for bacteria. Um, uh, but people are using those. They're using what's available to them. And in those cases, we recommend uh, that, you, that you follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Um, but in, in our case, you know, we have validated uh, um, uh, with, with third-party testing, a certified testing lab, the use of, of glutaraldehyde Cytex and um, and uh, an autoclave for this. And um, we, we, uh, our, our instructions for use actually detail all of that so as well. Okay, great. And I know you mentioned that it uh, by autoclave, it may reduce the number of cycles that, of, of life on that. So there was a follow-up question actually back to um, the probe life cycle. Is there a difference based on the size of the cervix that's being treated on the life cycle, or is it purely just on number of treatments regardless of the, the anatomy? No, good question. Yeah, it, it, it's regardless of the anatomy. It really is. The harshest part of the, uh, of, of the life cycle for the device is the, is the high-level disinfection or autoclave. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Um, let me just kind of circle back to a couple others. Uh, as far as um, treatment, uh, just a question about any anesthetic being used or required, and can an acetic acid hamper treatment, or if is any kind of clinical data on that? Um, yeah. So, um, uh, uh, so acetic acid does not does not hamper uh, the device. It doesn't doesn't affect the the thermal the heat transfer between the probe tip. And, um, and and the cervix. Um, sorry, Brian, there was two parts to that question. Can you can you remind me of the first part? Sure, yeah. So you definitely answered the, the second part about acetic acid would not hamper treatment, uh, but is there any recommendation for anesthetic uh, during treatment? Um, I, um, th there, there is, uh, so that, that study coming out of Nicaragua um, uh, actually did it without any anesthetic. And um, uh, when people were surveyed after the treatment um, about about how um, about you know the, the level of pain, they described they described um, the thermal coagulator as being very mild pain, more on the lines of cramping, um, as in as in menstrual cramps is is the sensation that was felt um, during 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 this treatment. Um, but being a very but being a very mild or uh, low level of of pain. Uh, during uh, during thermal coagulation. With that said, there there may be you know it it's it really depends on 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 the patient. Um, if if anesthetic is available, um, you know um, it, it that that does oh um, applying anesthetic giving anesthetic an injection of anesthetic um, does not um, uh, does not affect the the efficacy of the treatment either. Um, and so. And so that is definitely an option um, if if the patient or the provider would prefer to do that. Um, there, that's that's totally fine. Um, it's it, it, it's not contraindicated for this procedure. Perfect. So I know there was you mentioned that the temperature can be adjusted, and so can the time of treatment. And and I think you had actually mentioned that that can be done 
on your side before the shipment actually leaves. Is there a way for the the end user of the product to make those adjustments to the temperature or the treatment time once they've received it? Um, yes, yes, yes. That is that is a possibility. Um, and in that case, we'd like to do that with you. Um, so if um, through VA Global, we could connect with the user in that case, um, um, we, we'd be happy to kind of work through that process with them. Great. And then I know you mentioned it was the treatment time can go from 30 to 45 or 60, correct? Yeah, actually, it can do 20 seconds as well. But the World Health Organization recommends 30 seconds. But it is those, it is those 20, 30, 45, and 60 uh, uh, time durations. Great. And then for the temperature, it's 100, but you can increase that to 120. Or is there any other settings that you can increase to? Um, there is a 90 degree setting. Okay. Um, um, but but we do uh, it, it's it's indicated for 100 and above. Okay, perfect. Uh, so kind of nearing some of the questions. So if anybody else has other questions, please feel free to add more. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is just a little bit about the probes. Just a few questions came about um, in which instances you would recommend using the flat probe versus the nipple probe. Um, I think this really comes down to the to the to uh, the clinicians or the the, the practitioner's preference. Um, um, but uh, the the nipple probe is really uh, used for centering it in the os of the cervix. Um, so if there's it's to apply it right in in the os and keep it kind of centered. Um, it, it it doesn't move around, but it helps you know stabilize. So we actually find um, you know some um, when 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 an order is placed, um, uh, you can indicate which combination of the three different probes you would prefer. And we've had some people who want all nipple probes. Um, some people want all 19 millimeter flats. Uh, probably the most typical uh, combination of probes um, uh, orders that we receive is two two of the. I actually prepared it this way. I can kind of show this comparison. Um, so. um, this to, to contrast, this is the uh, this is a 19 millimeter probe and a 16 millimeter probe. Um, and then this is the 19 millimeter nipple and the 19 millimeter flat. Um, oh, um, so yeah, so it, it really comes to the preference. Um, uh, uh, sometimes if you know they, they've done their um, uh, their visual inspection with acetic acid or other tests, you know, um, um, they can do more than one application um, on the site to cover the entire area or to maybe exceed the area um, that they're that they're looking at. Um, and, and the device can handle, you know, as many applications as necessary uh, to, to, to complete the treatment for that patient. That's perfect. There, I, I don't know that you'll be able to answer this one because it's probably up to the individual medical provider. But are, are there any post-treatment recommendations um, as far as follow-up? Um, so. Um, so what um, what happens because it, it, it um, the the cervix is a mucosal membrane um, and so the tissue that is coagulated um, you know uh, uh, dies and because that's a mucosal membrane the body actually regenerates that mucosal tissue underneath it and so the coagulated tissue actually sloughs um, uh, the the way they describe it is it 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 sloughs off or it's it's lost. Um, there's no, there, there's no, there's no cutting. Um, there's, there's, there's no bleeding uh, associated with this, uh, with this device. So in, in that case, there really is um, um, no follow-up to see. Uh, well, um, uh, the follow-up is if they can and it's possible to see. You know how, how did you know did 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 the. Uh, the, the precancerous uh, lesion resolve, you know, within six months or or nine months or a year, and so and and so that's the follow up that we would that we would recommend. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, the only other questions we have right now are a little bit more, um, I guess, kind of logistical type things or technical. Uh, you showed Brian, Brian sorry, sorry. Um, but but I think what you said is is the most important thing that that, that should be up to um, the, the clinician um, to to decide you know how to administer treatment and follow up is part of there and so they'll probably have uh, some kind of protocol um, about how they, um, they 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 follow up with their patients to see how they're doing and so yeah we would we would defer we would defer to that um, as far as their internal protocols. Okay, perfect, understood. Uh, you did show the charger earlier with the plug, and I think it was the US plug. So a lot of customers just had a question of whether you had other plug types available. Um, no, so yeah, so we provide um, this plug. And so um, locally, depending on what um, your, uh, your, 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 your local plugs of standard are, so you have to provide some kind of adapter for it. Okay. Perfect. And then I know there's always a lot of questions about this, but I've kind of distilled them all into one uh, warranty. So I know there, there's a warranty of two years, but does that apply to the handle or to the probe? Do they have the same warranty or is there a separate warranty for each part of the device? Right. So so the handle is warrantied for, for two years. Um, and, and, and we expect the probes to work for that long. Um, and so um, and, and so the warranty is directly uh, related to to the handle, um, and 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 we expect the probes to you know to function, and, and so we are guaranteeing the the probes um, kind of in that time frame as well, um, uh, based on them being being treated and taken care of properly. Okay, beautiful. So that's actually all the questions we have, Tim. If there's anything else that you wanted to share that maybe came up in your mind over the last uh, hour or so, you're welcome to share that. Uh, if not, we can we can start wrapping up. Okay. Um, no, I think I've, I've I'm I'm drawing a blank right now on anything addition, but uh, it's been a pleasure, um, and I hope this is helpful. Um, you know, um, I uh, we're it, it's great working with Via Global. They're a great company. Um, um, as you have questions, uh, you know, send them to Via Global, and uh, if they aren't able to answer them, I'm sure they'll reach out to us, and we'll we'll try to get everyone up and running um, with thermal coagulation as quickly and as soon as possible. So. Perfect. Thanks so much, Tim. It's been a pleasure to work with you guys as well. So I just want to um, show everybody the screen again for the product page, and as Tim mentioned, if you're looking to uh, make a purchase or to get any pricing because we did get a lot of questions about that you can come to this product page for the thermocoagulator and just click that request pricing which again just showing you here will bring you down to the contact information once that's submitted someone from our team will reach out to you as soon as possible the other thing i did want to show quickly because tim went through in, in rather good detail the different probe types so we also do sell the probes individually because a lot of people asked about spare parts replacement things like that so this is in particular the 19 millimeter flat probe, but you can see here there's the 16 flat, the 19 nipple. So if you do want to either add the additional probes onto your purchase or at a later time buying the individual probes as replacements or um, just to kind of add to your treatment facility, we can do that as well. So at any time, come to the product page, you can request those information, uh, that information from us or Again, and I'll put it up on the edited version. You can contact directly to sales via, via globalhealth.com. Again, that's sales at via globalhealth.com. Uh, but that being said, Tim, I really appreciate the time. Uh, I know we had a lot of good questions, a lot of very engaged people, and that says a lot about the product, but also about the demonstration. So I appreciate the thorough nature and, and the well prepared demonstration there. Um, and it's been a pleasure having you, and we look forward to hopefully increasing our awareness and access to the thermocoagulator. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, everyone. Thank you all. And we'll look to see you on the next VIA Live product training. Thank you so much.